Failing to plan is planning to fail. Hi everyone, this is Warren. Welcome to today's video. I'm going to be showing you how to effectively organize and schedule your piano practice. And at the end of the video, I'll give you a little sample of what my practice routine has looked like throughout the years. So you might be asking yourself, why should I even bother with a plan? Well, if you don't do this, it's like shooting an arrow without aiming at a target. It's like cooking food without knowing what the ingredients are or even following a recipe. Ask yourself, would you want to eat that meal? Or if you've known someone who just sort of bought a dog on a whim without any plan whatsoever, it's like, yeah, I live in a one bedroom, really cramped studio. I think I'm going to get a pit bull. And if I still have improved my point, let me share with you a story. So imagine ancient Egypt, there was a Pharaoh and he had two sons and he was trying to figure out who am I going to give the keys to the kingdom to once I am gone. And what he decided to do was give them both a test. And what he told both of them was at the end of 30 days, whoever has built me an entire pyramid will be the true successor to this kingdom. So the first son, he's pretty strong and big to begin with and he just starts immediately grabbing brick after brick and these bricks are huge. It's really demanding manual labor but he's making some progress, he's getting it done. Meanwhile, the second son just sort of goes into his room and he starts to study and the villagers are kind of wondering what is this guy doing? They kind of start laughing at him a little bit. Two weeks go by and the first son is still laying brick after brick and the second son is still in his room, still studying, still reading books and making drawings and diagrams. The third week finally passes by and it's almost a week until the deadline. And the first son has made about halfway through the point. So half of the pyramid is pretty much built. The second son finally comes out of hiding, so to speak. What he starts to do is build a machine and two, three days go by. We're getting closer to the deadline, but he finally finishes this machine. He presses some buttons, pulls some levers, and within two days, he has built the whole entire pyramid. Meanwhile, the first son, even if you extended the deadline, still wouldn't have reached his goal of completing the whole pyramid. In my life, I have been both sons. When I was a piano major back in college, I was practicing anywhere from six to eight hours a day. I probably wasted a lot of it because there was really no planning going on. I just pretty much got through my performances, my recitals, my graduation through brute strength. And on the other hand, uh, I've always been a strong writer. Don't know why that is. It's just one of my natural gifts, I guess you could say. I knew what the structure was like with writing. I made outlines. Uh, I organized, you know, the intro, the body, the conclusion. And it's, it's kind of a frustration for me because I wonder why didn't I apply this to piano? If I had just simply done that, I would have been in a much better position. And I also see this mirrored in my own piano studio. My own students are kind of going through these phases. When they're younger, they're kind of like when I was a piano major where I could just practice six to eight hours all day long because you pretty much have all day to practice. So you don't really even need to think about scheduling. But what happens is when they get older, especially when they hit high school, if they haven't figured out how to organize just general productivity, things start to fall apart. They get hit with just a boatload of homework projects and their practice begins to suffer. And at this point, this is where I really need to teach them a productivity system and also how to schedule and organize their piano practice. So if this has ever happened to you, then congratulations. I have what I hope to be the solution today. So here is the actual action guide. The steps we're going to take in order to effectively organize and schedule your piano practice. Now, before we even organize or even schedule your piano practice, there's actually one very important step you need to take. This is actually the most important step of this plan I'm gonna lay out for you. And that has to do with setting a goal. 
do not skip this step. Without getting this down, you're going to fail. So take a lot of time. This is the most time consuming step. You might even take a few days up to a week to really think about it. One of the most important questions that I ask students and parents, imagine you've been taking lessons with me for an entire year. What exactly would you like to have seen happen? What kind of results would thrill you? And you'd be surprised at the answers because it's not much of an answer. It's just, uh, I want my child, or if they're an adult student, I, I just want to enjoy playing piano. I want it to be fun for them. to so just, you know, practice every day, uh, maybe play a few songs here and there. And that is really not much of a goal. You know, they're paying me, so I am doing my job. Uh, I am going to fashion and customize a goal for them. But if you're doing this on your own, if you don't have a teacher, you've got to listen up. I'm going to give you a framework that's really going to help you. And this is an acronym. This is borrowed from the fields of productivity, business, self-help. Uh, it's something that I've incorporated from time to time and it's something that's really going to help you. The acronym I'm going to teach you is SMART goal, a SMART goal. S stands for specific, M is for measurable, A is for achievable, R is relevant, and five, T is time bound. So before we actually apply that to piano, let's just take a regular activity, something like health and exercise. So let's say specific goal, they have a goal to lose about 20 pounds to get into like beach shape, you know, you want to wear a swimsuit at the beach and have people admire you or whatever. That, that's specific enough. Measurable, I'm going to exercise half an hour every day. Instead of that greasy hamburger, I'm going to eat a salad and I'm going to aim to lose about one pound a week. And that's actually achievable. One pound a week, even one and a half, that's not highly unrealistic. It's not like you're trying to get a six pack in two weeks. And R, is it relevant? Like, does it mean something to you? Like, is it just totally superficial, which can kind of get your foot in the door, but is there some deeper meaning there? And then time bound, which is basically the deadline. What is the exact date that you're going to reach this goal? Let's apply this towards something like learning a Beethoven sonata. Well, that's specific, measurable. I'm going to practice 30 minutes to an hour every single day. Achievable, is this something that's not too beyond where my level is at? Is this something I can reach? Relevant, does it really give me good emotions? Is it really meaningful to me? And then T, time bound. I want to learn it within two months. And then when you get even better, and you get really used to setting these SMART goals, what's cool is you can start to set shorter term goals, mid-term goals, and long-term goals. Okay, now let's say you actually have your goal. Let's talk about organization. And when you're organizing your piano practice, I want you to think of it as two different categories. One is the specific project, like the Beethoven Sonata, and two would be some skills. What are the skills that you need to be practicing in order to reach that goal as well? Well, if it's classical music, you definitely need good technique. Scales, arpeggios, chords, you know, some like technical exercises, books by list or other things like that. Let's say you want to learn to play by ear. Uh, so a project with that would be learning to play specific songs from like a jazz fake book and the skills that you're practicing, transposing um, melodies and songs in different keys. You're learning all sorts of different harmonies to increase your jazz vocabulary. Now, once you have this down, I'm going to teach you another concept here. Uh, I know there's a lot of information in here, so be prepared to watch this video more than once. The concept that's really gonna help you with this is the 80-20 rule. And this is called the Pareto Principle. If you don't know what that is, just a basic rundown. It's an economic principle. It was like some famous Italian economist, last name Pareto. I forget his first name at the moment. What he realized was about 20% of the people living in his country, which is Italy, had about 80% of the entire wealth. And once you really learn this rule, you'll begin to see it everywhere. Like let's say you're going to your favorite restaurant. 80% of the time, you're only going to order 20% of the food. Health and the exercise, right? 
80% of the time you need to be focused more on your diet than your exercise. Even apply this towards friends, like you only hang out with about 20% of your friends, those are your closest friends. Even with like Netflix, like 80% of people only watch a 20% of whatever shows are on there. So you're gonna apply this towards your repertoire, the songs, the projects that you're gonna be working on, and your skill. So it could be 80% repertoire, 20% skill, although, if you want my professional advice, you should spend 80% of your time doing the technical stuff, 20% of your time on projects. And a lot of people are not going to want to do this. But if you do this, this is going to help you much more than the other way around. One of the places you can see this principle in action is sports. Kobe Bryant, rest in peace, Black Mamba, and Michael Jordan. So. What they would do 80% of the time, and actually it's it's more like 90, 10, 95, five to be honest, they, they're gonna spend 80% of their time working on the fundamentals, the drills, the basics, okay? What you saw in the game, that's really not how they practice, okay? Because they focus so much on the fundamentals is when the games came around, they could be really creative and do all those crazy acrobatic moves. So I hope that's enough motivation for you to try it out. And it's kind of necessary to overcome that. It's just not fun in the beginning because you have to get used to it, okay? It, we have this, this thing in our brain that tells us to avoid all things that are difficult and too challenging. So you're gonna naturally gravitate towards the songs because that's what you know best. That's what's easy. But if you train yourself to focus on the technical stuff, Trust me, your results are going to skyrocket. And the final step, now we're gonna look at your schedule. So you're gonna do just a basic time on it, seeing how much time every day do you have, like how much free time do you have to devote to practice, and also make sure to total it out for the entire week, just to make sure you're hitting your goals. And at this point, it actually might be necessary for you to go back and review your goals. You might have to tweak something because maybe you have a lot more time than you thought. Well, in that case, you can actually move the deadline up or maybe you don't have as much time as you thought you would and you don't want to give up on this goal, then you kind of need to extend the deadline. So that's pretty much the shortest step. Uh, I'm going to now give you a little sample of what my schedule has looked like throughout the years. I have another YouTube channel, Rhapsody Piano Studio, where I just uploaded just thousands of piano tutorials at this point. When I started the YouTube channel, I had to spend about 20% of my time practicing the technical stuff and you know concert level repertoire. And 80% of my time went into uploading and practicing and recording those tutorials. Now, I really didn't make much progress during this stage. It was just about maintaining my skills, just making sure I didn't get worse. And once I had enough videos to give me some breathing space, then I could switch it. Now it's 20% on tutorials, still doing tutorials so I don't run out of videos, and then now 80% of my time went towards practice. And this is not always going to stay the same because my goals are different during certain phases in my life. Like, you're watching this channel right now. Now a lot of my time has to go into making these videos, getting better at speaking, writing scripts, and editing. So it might get a little bit more complicated than 80-20. Maybe it actually looks like, you know, 25% of my time on this channel, 25% of my time on like uh, practicing, and then 50% of my time going towards tutorials. So it, maybe the 80-20 rule won't always work, uh, especially if you're like me, if you have a lot of different focuses in life. But in that case, you just look at the entire pie and then you can divide it accordingly. But to be honest, 80-20 is the way to go. Like I know I'm not making as much progress with practice because I'm choosing to spend some time doing this. The last thing I wanna say is that, look, life is going to get in the way. Your life probably doesn't look anything like mine. I am so lucky, so grateful that I'm doing my passion pretty much for a living. I get to schedule my day every day the way I want it to. It looks pretty stable, pretty predictable on a day-to-day -day, uh, day -day basis. But for you, maybe you have other responsibilities. Maybe you're, uh, maybe you're a parent, you have kids to take care of. Good God, I can't imagine that. I have 
two dogs at home and that's enough for me. Maybe you have like a part-time job or maybe like a full-time job, a young professional, like nine to five. And then sometimes you get called into work. Sometimes it's random projects or maybe you're a college student. And then at the last second, the professors just like to spring some you know, extra work on you. So your life might be a lot more unpredictable. Don't make a plan and expect to completely stick to it 100% of the time. And that's also why you shouldn't schedule too far ahead of time. I would say just stick to the day to day and the week. Think of the planning, the scheduling, the organizing, all this stuff. It's just like predicting the weather, okay? Like some days you're gonna wake up and you're gonna wanna go on a jog and it's raining out. Some days you're just gonna wake up and you're not gonna do anything because you know the weather's gonna be bad. You look outside and it's sunny outside. I want you to think of this plan as just a prediction for what your life will look like. Trust me, you're going to be so much happier doing it that way because if you make a plan and you make like the perfect plan and then one little thing kind of knocks that out, it's like throwing a monkey wrench into a machine. So the proper mindset is just to know that something unexpected might happen, more than likely will happen, and just get used to adapting to this. Be flexible and adaptable in your approach. If you are struggling to practice, if you put this plan into action, this is one of the most important things you could do. Probably one of the most important videos I could make. So I hope you guys enjoyed today's video. If you did, hit the like button. If it's your first time here, subscribe. Hit the notification bell. Share this video. I will see you guys next time and happy practicing.